After having stayed inactive while guarding our own realm, the honor of Thor army led by the commander Witslaw had suffered heavily from low integrity. But with the king just having returned from his own expedition, he and his men deserved the rest, meaning it was time for the Thor army to shine. But with this atrocious standing inside the army, many called for executions, which we weren't willing to see through just yet. Instead, we stayed inside our own rat-infested lands. This made us debate whether to construct yet another sanitation building here to help cleanse the city. However, in the end, we chose to focus on economy, so we are able to fund the army we require for our inevitable invasion of Britannia. Because, as it seems, we might find more than one hostile opponent on the Isles. Apparently, the Kingdom of England has thrown in their lot for the Imperial Throne to rule over the Holy Roman Empire. This came as a shock to everyone, including me. It did get resolved in a rather underwhelming fashion with an instant peace treaty. I know, right? Pathetic in every single way. I thought we were about to witness a great war, but no. But, the only reason I'm telling you this right now, well, <laughs> I guess you'll see that in the future. With the Isles quickly dividing itself into two factions, we made relations with the Principality of Wales, swaying their coffers to our side. For now at least. We did the same for the Republic of Pisa done in the Mediterranean. With that small piece of work done, we transferred the most elite forces into the Thor army, so the king could return to Aalborg without holding all our strongest troops here. Now it was finally time to set sail for the faraway lands. A sad side effect of running from one war to another meant that our population increasingly grew angry and demanded an end to this incessant war. This caused our men-at-arms to decrease in fighting spirit and thus effectiveness. We will have to be swift in our war. They did offer us peace, but a declaration of war is exactly what it is. Their demise is certain. So when we inevitably landed on the shores of Inverness, we immediately rushed through the annoying snow to besiege the walls. The following summer, the city was ours, with us merely occupying the place as we required a base of operations. Most buildings still had to be repaired, but we were justly on it. However, with this beachhead acquired and the east relatively stable, the king also set sail for Scotland, because we might need him. Our impressive show of strength caught the eye of the county of Brunswick, who now wanted to advance our relations even further, which we obviously gladly accepted. As part of the agreement, some of the warriors will join our military order fort as Templar soldiers for our future campaigns. We also use this to fill out our ranks to its max in the Thor army with a couple of spears. And despite we still were in need of a few more men, which we would have acquired by staying inside the city throughout the winter, we marched out to besiege Edinburgh. We had to end this war swiftly with this war exhaustion. The heir to the throne of Denmark, Prince Valdemar, had finally come of age. I mean, it's kind of dumb that he has the same name as his father, but it is a royal family line, I guess. It meant we now started to receive marriage proposals from far and wide from our puppet state included. However, the only downside to their offer was her age. At 41 years of age, it sure seems like a stretch to expect any offspring at all. So we refused. But perhaps granting him a position as governor in the Highlands, which we just acquired, it might make him a more lucrative match for the rest of the world. After this, our two armies collaborated in the slaughter of the Scottish capital. A blow that vanquished our attackers. With our northern realm mostly at peace, we organized a search for a suitable wife for our heir within the Christian countries. The county of Landers had one of reasonable age, but with quite the dubious personality. 
The thing is, she didn't even want to marry into our family, meaning we eventually went for the Kievan royal, a non-Catholic Christian, which is kind of sad, but it is a Christian nonetheless. At 38 years of age, it wasn't the best match in the world, but we made it work for a sum of 1200 gold. For this, Agafva and her two daughters joined our court. I think. I'm not sure actually. I don't know really how this works. Hopefully they will get more babies or we might have to cut her off, if you know what I mean. After that, we gave over our most elite units to the King's Guard so they could be brought back home to Denmark and then later participate in the Second Baltic Crusade. If we are to leave only a small garrison this far away from home, we concluded that a proper fortification at the edge for the domain would help secure the land. This would in turn mean Inverness, which is more protected further away from the border, could be made into a donated fief. A fine adjustment, I would say. On his travels back home, the king came across a tiny roaming fleet of Scottish warriors. They fled at the first sight of our banners, but not far enough as we ruthlessly pursued them, allowing the sea to swallow them whole. But with that done, we double timed it the rest of the way, making steady progress as we even reached Groningen during the winter. However, the cold was not so kind to our governor of Hamburg, John, who, by the way, was the most disloyal subject in court. So, I'm not quite sure whether to call this a tragedy or a blessing from God. Oh well, moving on, we have developed the city charters we required from our researchers. Overall, it gave us access to more significant economic buildings as well as increasing overall growth. Next on our list of developments we want to acquire was back in the military field. But as that was chosen and done with, the king and his men returned to Hamburg. With regards to the gold we had accumulated over the last half a year, we chose to invest it into a library in Edinburgh and convert the fields again. By doing this, the extreme research time will slowly be lowered to make the individual ideas more acquirable in the future. And of course, we are planning to building more of these research centers. It is practically our main goal from now on as our economy is, well, let's say sufficient. With regards to the rest of the gold, it was spent on an assassin so we can cause a bit of havoc on the Isles. We did also have to fill in the governor post in Hamburg. There were three overall candidates, but in the end we chose to assign Hans, as the others almost seemed too qualified and could potentially turn out to be a rival if we aren't careful. Just like Jon. However, unlike what we usually choose, we organized a raised levy edict here for when the Templar building was finished. We needed done fast as the Principality of Wales saw the absence of our elite forces as an opportunity to declare war on us. Fucking traitors. This fucking island is insane. They immediately followed it up with a forced landing inside our territory. So this rather short return to Denmark was abandoned in favor of another foolish war. He had to sail back. This situation was particularly terrifying as our fortification wasn't finished yet. We sent our assassin out in vain as he failed his mission, meaning we carefully fought all the mercenaries available. Going from one terrible place to another, we were about to expand our city in Sweden. And although I claimed we were only gonna build the research centers from now on, Jutteborg was the exception. Like they aren't smart enough to actually help us in that matter anyway. We're talking about the mind and being smart and all, so they better work in the fields. As expected, the Welsh besieged Edinburgh. This obviously couldn't go on for much longer, meaning we had to fight this without our king. But if that is the case for us, I thought the same for them, as our assassin masterfully snuck past their guards to take their king down before the honor of Thor army sallied out to attack them on the field. Our formation was rather simple, Spears up front, skirmishes in behind, swords on the flanks, and then most of our cavalry on the right, as we intend to force a win on that front. They would even run ahead of our position to lure out an engagement with the enemy cavalry, 
which we definitely will win if that was the case. And as expected, they jumped on it right off the bat, allowing us to encircle them as well as chase after their skirmishers, which they left vulnerable. But it wasn't all sunshine. On the left, that cavalry contingent broke within seconds of fighting, forcing our commander to intervene. So long he could do that, we would most likely win this engagement as the front line of spears were holding the line with such efficiency that our cavalry that by now had hunted down all the skirmishers could return to perform rear charges on the enemy. This excellent show of force turned out in our favor, meaning this enemy army routed and us being left with a decisive victory.